What's up? To me, motorcycle suspension is probably the most important thing on a motorcycle. It could save your life. Most of all, it can make or break a good ride and or make it last longer or cut it short. The gentleman that we are going to go see, and hopefully he's there, is a man named Bob Bell. And Bob is kind of like the Obi-Wan Kenobi of suspension. The reason I'm heading out there is not just to shoot this little video, but it's coordinating with a project I'm doing for the XR650 that I'm building. Hit the subscribe button and you'll see that video coming soon. Now I know what you're thinking. You're probably saying, well, my suspension company is just as good and that's fine. Because again, suspension is like your barber. If you got a good one and he knows how you like it, then titles did you guys end up winning wow um on the 650 um the 650r they in baja they won every title on that bike from 19 well they won the baja 1000 in 1999 so that was their first 1x on that particular bike although they had races 600 in the first two races down in baja that year and then in from 2000 through 2005 it won every championship in baja until in 2006 um, the X, the uh, CRF450X came out and it, we started testing on that and by the end of that year uh, the 450X had taken the championship. Uh, so basically six years straight, the XR, seven years straight. The Why do you think you have the XR650R suspension so dialed amongst other suspension companies? Um, well it all started back in uh, late 99 when uh, Honda brought over the first two 650Rs for uh, racing in Baja. They raced uh, at the Baja 1000 and that was kind of their introduction into the US. And so then uh, after the Baja 1000 race, they raced two factory bikes. Um, Johnny and uh, Bruce Ogilvy at Honda, you know, we were already doing work for them on the 600s. So they just basically recruited us to start dialing in the 650 for continuous racing in Baja and best in the desert. So right from the get go, uh, early January 2000, uh, we were constantly out in the desert with Johnny Campbell, Steve Hengeveld, and uh, Bruce Ogilvy, um, and even Eric Krippa from uh, Honda, and we were just going full bore trying to make the bike, you know, the best it could be to start winning races uh, immediately. So um, we had the best guys testing with them, we had all the resources at our availability, so it gave us a big head start on really dialing in that bike. How many uh, hours do you think you spent on testing with XR650R suspension? over those six years? Wow. Um, it would, yeah, it'd be hard to calculate, you know, just because we would go to uh, Arizona, we would go to uh, Nevada. We spent several days in Nevada one time all together, uh, you know, doing different locations. We spent a ton of time up at Bell Mountain, and then we spent a lot more time in Baja, and it was all testing, 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 testing. Um, you'd get a good setting, and you'd go to the next race, and it would be good, guys would go out there and do well win but they'd always come up with something hey it could be a little better you know let's let's see if we can keep improving these areas because racing is where you actually find out how good your suspension is you can test 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 and but you're in more controlled conditions you know the riders aren't pressed to their limits they're 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 just feeling out the bike when you're in a race you know, you're trying to taste you know the factory Kawasaki's or anybody else that's when you're finding out you're, you're going over your limit, you're going out of your comfort zone. And that's when we started finding out, okay, we can do better here, we can do better here. So it was a, it was a never ending quest to make that thing better until basically the last time we raced it. So it just, but you know, at least a hundred hours, probably more, maybe two, 300 hours. I mean, it just, it was a never ending quest. Uh, do you think the, the 650, if refined by Honda could come back and be a competitor in Baja or do you think the 450 does a good enough job what was some of the things that you miss about having the 650 as a tool to to race Baja what are the some of the uh, things that the 450 lacks that um, maybe the 650 had 
I, I think <clears throat> the 650 absolutely is still competitive in Baja. I mean, even today. I mean, it's no, you know, nobody's racing it as much anymore. I mean, there are guys still racing it, but a lot of the top serious teams, you know, aren't racing it. The, the biggest thing for the 450X, the advantage it has is maybe a little quicker acceleration and it's a little lighter, so going into corners, late braking, and, and, and uh, just a little more nimble and stuff. But where the 650 shines is just going fast once you get above third gear. I, I kind of almost liken them to the uh, 450X is more like the, uh, the class one car where the 650 is the trophy truck. Uh, trophy trucks can't turn as quick, they're not quite as nimble when they get up to say on the backside of Mike's loop and stuff, but boy you send them down in a fast set of whoops down in San Felipe and stuff, I mean, you know, they're, they're, the, they're the vehicle to be in. And the 650, a lot of people question how is it in the whoops and stuff like that. If you get going fast in whoops, set up correctly, <laughs> that bike is pretty phenomenal. I mean, uh, the other things it has is it has, you know, the, the chassis and the way the suspension works together, it has a little more flex, but one of the things that is a big advantage is it's always going to be a little plusher just because of that. So when you're going down embedded rock roads and, and even in slower terrain, you know, going through single track and stuff, it just, it really eats it up. You don't have to dodge as much as you would on, on lighter bikes. You don't get kicked around as much because it's a, it's a thing with flex and gravity, basically. So um, it's really good at that. The other thing is, I mean, you know, we did the Baja 2000, um, it was 1,726 miles back then, and it was the first year racing that bike in Baja, and we had two, two bikes on the Team Honda, both of them finished flawlessly with no problems, um, very little oil added or anything, and at the end of the race you take, a, take them apart, take the motors apart, and the things were just like, okay, just change the oil, turn around, and head back to Ensenada. I mean, the things were perfect. That's something you don't see in, in some of the newer bikes, not saying they're unreliable, but this thing was built for reliability. This thing was built to go a long ways. So that's one of the things you can, you know, the things redline out about 8,500 RPMs where the newer bikes are about 11.2. So it's just, you know, just the wear and tear on the motor is so much less and they're so comfortable to ride. And so, yeah, if you had a really tight, gnarly, slower speed course, they're a little more of a handful, but when you get heading down the peninsula, I still don't think there's any bike that can beat them. There you go. I couldn't have said it any better. I mean, I shot some things, I explained some stuff, I tried to go into it and explain it. If you're putting suspension on your off-road motorcycle, there's one person that you need to go see, and that's Precision Concepts. I'll put the links and the phone numbers to contact them in the description below. I think Bob said it best too, as far as the XR650 and its nostalgia, its longevity, and its potency still to this day as a off-road weapon that you can get, you could still buy today, you just gotta find them. So join me next time as I find, buy, and build a classic Honda XR650R Dominator for Baja on the next episode of Berm Cannon's Baja Diaries.